Good evening and welcome to News Channel 8. I'm Jerome Ajean and these are the top stories we're working on tonight. The aftermath to yesterday's tragedy, professional advice on suicide and domestic abuse, and your Memorial Day horse racing highlights. Details on these stories and more coming up next on News Channel 8. In our top story tonight, the aftershocks are still being felt on the murder slash suicide of Nefertiti O'Brien. She was 28 years old and left four children behind. News Channel 8's Wes Small investigates this tragedy. The entire Virgin Islands is still feeling the aftermath of yesterday's homicide slash suicide. The incident happened here, uh, up here in uh, Cyan Hill. As, uh, the family's still trying to put bits and pieces together after yesterday's shocking experiment, experience. It was definitely traumatic for all involved. As News Channel 8 cameras got to this scene, there was just a lot of cars up here um, because um, this girl was very popular, that's for sure, this young lady. Here's what we know happened. As police arrived to the scene, 28-year-old Nefertiti O'Brien was found dead yesterday, um, the victim of an apparent homicide-suicide. Um, her boyfriend, 36-year-old Devanon Joseph. Um, this incident happened around 11 o'clock yesterday. And um, I, right now, I'd like to take you to Melody Rames, uh, the VIPD spokesperson, as she could uh, shine some light on this horrible tragedy. Police on St. Croix are investigating an apparent murder-suicide that occurred on St. Croix Monday, May 25th. Police were called to a residence in Estate Rattan where 28-year-old Nefertiti O'Brien suffered a fatal gunshot wound. Police also discovered a second victim, 36-year-old Devon Joseph, parked in a vehicle about 1,000 feet from the residence on an isolated road. That victim suffered an apparent self-inflicted gunshot wound. According to St. Croix Deputy Chief Chris Howell, police were alerted to the case by a call at 10.52 a.m. from the female victim's mother. She told police she was called to the home by Joseph, who is her daughter's boyfriend, who also lived there. He asked her to come home right away, she said. Detectives from the Criminal Investigation Bureau continued to investigate this case. Again, without invading on the privacy of this shocked family, um, friends and family members, uh, you could see their cars and some movement down there. News Channel 8 has decided not to go any closer um, to the scene, but we can tell you that um, Ms. Nefertiti O'Brien was very well loved in the community. She was a school teacher here, and um, the shock waves are definitely being felt in this community. Uh, if we know anything about this tragic situation, of course, this situation is being looked at by the VIPD, insular detectives, by the detectives, Deputy Chief Howe, uh, looking at this case very closely, and along with Chief Benta. Uh, not much that we can say, except that this is a horrible tragedy. Who knows what was going on in this young couple's life um, that led up to this horrible event. Now, here we are uh, in uh, a state sign hill. I'm Wes Small for News Channel 8. Thanks, Wes. And domestic violence and suicide seem to be on the rise, not only globally, but in the territory as well. News Channel 8's Wes Small looks for answers. Yesterday, uh, the murder and the death of the granddaughter of our former governor, Alexander Farrelly, Miss Nefertiti O'Brien, only 28 years old, the mother of four children. Uh, the victim of a murder slash suicide. Now the entire community is asking why, and we're pretty much still in shock. And uh, today I'd like to give it to two professionals to try to help us, to try to make sure there's no more future Nefertiti O'Briens, uh, to try to get a handle on domestic violence, and it's definitely on the rise. We talk about suicide. Uh, we do know that since April 11th, five Virgin Islanders have succumbed to suicide alone. That including an 11-year-old boy who was taunted because 
bullies thought that he didn't talk proper English because he taught Krusian, all the way to a superior court judge. What would make a person take his own life? And perhaps more horrific, what would make a person kill someone and then take their own life? Today, we'll talk to two professionals, Clemma Lewis, uh, she is the co-director, along with Mary Mingus, at the Women's Coalition. The first thing I want to do is offer our condolences to the family of Nefertari, to her mom and her siblings and other family members, and definitely to her children who've lost their mom. And we're sorry about what took place over the holiday, but the holiday has really been rough this weekend with a lot of sadness and people being hurt. I just want to speak to the issue of domestic violence. If you're out there and listening, if you're in a relationship and there's any signs of domestic violence, I would like the first thing you really need to do is get some help because sometimes we think we can handle things ourselves and they get out of hand and we don't have anybody to fall back on. So my suggestion is if you're in a relationship and you're having problems, yes, if you're in a relationship and you're having problems, you can feel free to call the Women's Coalition and come and speak to one of the counselors here to see if we can help you work it through. If it's beyond that, because what happens in some domestic violence cases when the partner has decided they had enough, usually the woman, and she's decided that she had enough, the other person has decided that they lost control and they won't let go. And when they lose control and won't let go, they will do anything to stop the person from leaving. So what we normally do in these cases, because statistics are showing on the average now, more and more when women try to leave domestic violence, they're being killed. So what we're recommending for victims out there, whether you a woman or a man, is that if you're in a relationship and it's over and you're trying to get out, please call the Women's Coalition at 773-972. Now we are with clinical forensic psychologist Denise Marshall, Dr. Denise Marshall, and we've had her on before talking about suicide. Um, today, uh, we're going to quickly get into it, but Doc, I want to just inform you, since April 11th, with the loss of Jaheem Herrera, in Atlanta. We talked about him 11 years old just because he taught Krusian and he was bullied. We've lost five Virgin Islanders since April 11th to suicide. Hard economic times, um, bad relationships. What is it? Wes, like I told you in the last interview, depression can be caused by many things. And from the trend that we're seeing, it, it definitely has a lot to do with stress. Okay, what's going on in these person's lives take a toll on them and it could lead to clinical depression. Um, signs may be observed and some signs you may not be able to observe. I think what we're seeing uh, um, a trend in is that these individuals are dealing with this internally and they're not seeking professional treatment. Um, it could be because they're embarrassed to, to share it with their loved ones or their friends or family members. And a lot of stress is they're taken in and it's very hard for them to express it out. So I think the bottom line is individuals who, who feel that they're being burdened by all type of different stressors. It could be financial, it could be relationship problems, it could be problems in the school system. Um, they need to be able to speak out, speak mm -hmm. out and seek professional help because as we see, this is becoming a crisis in the Virgin Islands. For News Channel 8, I'm Wes Small.